So how did the Chronicle come to be? So the time frame of the Chronicle really started the end of summer 2006. We had just wrapped up a tour with our buddies in Fall from the Sky, and John was getting ready to leave to Washington, D.C. for grad school. Peter asked, hey, can we record, or can you record those songs so I have something, so the band has something, basically, so we have something to work on while you're away, and hopefully we can record these for our for a full-length record sometime later in the year. So I ended up recording about six or seven songs. So I recorded drums, bass, and guitar, basically just so we had a document of something to work on, something to work towards that would eventually become The Chronicle. A couple of songs existed in our live set for a number of years, but some were just demos, acoustic demos that I had in my room, warehouse demos, you know, demos I had with Brian, different people in the band, etc. And I remember John writing the songs, and everything felt great around that time frame. It's cliche, but it's not really something I can describe. It was just you, you, you felt it inside. I couldn't wait to hear that product uh, put on to, uh, to a recording. John was a huge part of the foundation of the band. He was the main songwriter. When he left for DC, we definitely felt it. And that was when uh, Protagonist was um, the big three. It was me, Brian, and Hazen playing shows with a bunch of different fill-ins. Filter between uh, Kyle, uh, Jeffy, Giancarlo. We kept playing shows. We kept wanting to play shows, and we, we made it happen. There were a few times where Peter would call and say, hey, man, you play a show? Was, yeah, absolutely. Give me the songs. I had actually told both of them that I thought the protagonist should break up, as opposed to it, seeing it just kind of go like this. We were more on our survival game than on our A game. As a band, protagonist just made it work. The band is bigger than ourselves, and, and what, whatever was needed to be done to make protagonist still go was done, and it was done properly. So from John leaving to when we actually recorded the record, I had those blueprint demos. Those were constantly on repeat. I was about to move to Gainesville. I definitely went into panic mode. I kind of felt like I was kind of alone in the situation. The time wasn't on our side for sure. At the time, I was kind of coming to terms with the fact that the band may be coming to a close with everybody partying their different ways. I just knew that we had to get this record recorded. I took it upon myself to contact Jeffy, our former drummer. He had been filling in for us here and there at the time, and we had just started to really rekindle our friendship. We'd done protagonists for like five years, and we kind of grew apart a little bit, so I went and started the band called Know the Score. Had a couple records, toured. He was always still in touch with the protagonist guys, you know, we were pretty much family. Pete and John got at me and said they needed a drummer for their record, and we were always really easy to work together. So fast forward to May of 2007. So Peter gave me a call. I remember talking to him and saying, like, hey, we have to get this record recorded. I said, you know, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to make the time for that with, like, with classes and with travel. And he said, you know, we have, we have a block that we can do it in July. And Jeffy said he can play drums. And that is one of the things that really, you know, convinced me. And to me, it was like, no, like, we need to get this done now. Um, that night, I went home and bought a plane ticket. Next thing you know, uh, the Chronicle was born. We didn't have a lot of time, nor did we have a lot of money to get this record done. The best solution that we came up with was recording it with Tony, and then having someone else doctor it up and make it a record. Right now we're at the uh, studio. Well, what are we about to do? Right now we're about to go record some hot tracks. I remember the drums went really smooth. Jeffy learned everything right away. We learned all the songs in a day. There's 11 songs on the Chronicle, but I think we recorded 17 or 18 songs, including B-sides and covers. I was coming up with everything right on the spot with John and Peter and Brian. We used one guitar, which was Brian's 1981 Gibson SG. Brian and I have talked, you know, since we've recorded that record and said, you know, maybe we should have got another guitar, maybe we should have messed with the amps a little bit, but at the time we really felt that you know, that amp setup and especially that guitar is how we would get the best performances and best sounds for the record. It was pretty smooth because I knew the songs because I practiced them like crazy. John knew the songs because he knows every song. We just sat in a warehouse that we always sit in and just played the songs. <laughs> Fucking a creep, dude. Fucking Brian, dude. He's over here going. <laughs> that we did the, all the guitars in two to three days and that we did the bass in two days and you know, the vocals took a little longer. First mix down of the record was done by Eric Victor at the Creep House in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. We had worked with Eric a number of times before on our first full length Hope and Rage and our EP Reasoning with Time. So Eric seemed like a natural choice to go mix down the record with. He brought the record up to me and it was like I just had to clean up all this shit. There was like so many vocal tracks, it was like they didn't 
they recorded everything and didn't throw anything out. So we spent like two days like just going through all these tracks, like 80 tracks per song. It was fucking insane. So Peter flew up from Florida. I drove up from Washington, D.C. and our friend Jeff took the bus down from New York just to kind of hang out with us and just be kind of a sanity check in there. When I got to, to Creep, I was I really liked the songs and I really liked the record. I kind of ate my words because I'm glad they didn't break up. Pretty Painless Process also did some vocals for our, the song Attack that Peter hadn't got a chance to do in Florida and did the whole mix down really quick. The first mix we had like a time frame where it's, it sounded fun, we were excited. We wrote these songs, we recorded these songs, and we got to hear them. And then we were had the Japan tour already planned, so we just pressed them right away. Had this fun Japanese version of the Chronicle made, and we went. Japan was the most fun tour ever. I, no matter how many times I've been there, the first time the protagonist was hands down the best. Because we sat in vans, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We just had a good time. We got driven around, we got to eat food in people's houses, there wasn't hotels. And it was also the first time that a lot of the songs on the Chronicle were even played live. It's more of a significance of the band because it gave life experience and sentimental value to the songs that were on the Chronicle. Had the record with us, got to promote the band over there, hang out with Last Target. For us, it was a dream come true. It was one of those common goals that we all had. Oh, I just wanted to buy an orange to, you know, a little homesick. I look over and I realize Jeffy has reached celebrity status in Japan. Let's investigate this. Amazing. Probably the pinnacle of my musical career because um, all I ever wanted to do was go to Japan. That was like, if I get to go there, I can stop <laughs> touring in vans and sleeping on carpet and <laughs> I, I'll be happy with what I've achieved as a musician. I used to have a daily ritual and every morning I would get up and I would go to Starbucks. As lame as that sounds, it is what it is, right? I got to know pretty much every customer because that's how great of a barista I was but there was one in particular named Vinny he would come in every single day and get the same drink the guy behind the counter he goes are you in less than Jake I go yeah he goes I'm Brian I go hey Brian as a dude living in a small town in a punk band how could I not get to know him and tell him all about it little by little he would say oh I'm in a band oh I play guitar oh my band name is Protagonist. And then to one point he goes, oh, by the way, here's my band CD. Shortly after that, he went to Chicago to record an album. That's around the time that we found out about Paper and Plastic. In spring of 2008, I remember going on to punknews.org and seeing the first press announcement for Paper and Plastic. I called Brian and he already knew why I was calling. And he was just like, yeah, dude, I saw it, I know. And I was like, we have to get on this label. I first heard of Protagonist because I'm from South Florida. Newfound was on tour and we went on a day off to go see a friend's band, Suffocate Faster. And while we were at that show, um, Pete, the singer of Protagonist, came up to me and um, he's like, hey, I don't know if you know me or whatever, I'm friends with your brother, I'm Pete. And we kind of, we started talking. We would hang out every once in a while after that. I remember we went um, to a movie one day. It was kind of like a, it was like a, it was like a bro, like a mandate, like a bro thing, you know? Send me some demos and he's like, yeah, I'm kind of looking to get this out. And I just flat out asked him if I can reach out to Vinny from Less and Jake. You slipped me the protagonist CD. Uh, that later became The Chronicle. I listened through it and I thought that it was good. The Chronicle fit into what type of music that I wanted to release for Paper and Plastic. And then he said, yes, like I, I want this to be a flagship record for the label. So I was stoked when I heard that Paper and Plastic wanted to release The Chronicle. It made me feel uh, excited, but it also made me feel relieved to the point that people were gonna hear the record. God, we'd all been going to Less Than Jake shows forever with Less Than Jake and Against All Authority and having to find ways into the show if the show was sold out. It seemed like the best possible scenario. Like, a Gainesville record label, with a Gainesville dude I lived in there, Less Than Jake drummer, Old Fuel by Rami owner, he liked the songs, it was Perfect Storm. The thing I didn't like about it was how it was mixed and partially how it was tracked. They weren't too happy with the mix, but I mean, honestly, there was like so much stuff going on, I can't even believe that like, 
I was, I was basically just doing cleanup for a while. I called my friend Jamie Wolford, who was in Animal Chin and the Stereo. So I said, hey, Jamie, I really want to put this record out, but can you mix it for me? Like, remix it and fix it? We tried to get the files. Files were corrupt. We tried to get a hard drive, and the hard drive was messed up. We tried to get it again, and the files came through, and they sounded horrible. Sitting there with a the fucking green apron on in Starbucks saying, like, how is this shit going to get sorted out? And finally, somehow, the files that we needed for the album got into Jamie Wolfer's hands. He literally produced the record after the record was already tracked and mixed, to be honest with you. He produced it and really sculpted what the sound of that record is. Well, I guess that Vinny and you know maybe some of the band members think that I had a hand in producing or even, in a way, saving the record. I don't think it was uh, saved by me. I think I just brought out some of the stuff that was kind of encoded inside the material. So I really refer to Jamie Wolford as a mad chemist. I had to do some kind of interesting stuff with the drums, uh, mainly a technique called drum reamping. The speaker was about this close to a snare drum, which was tuned to sound like the drum on the original recording. And that speaker excites the drum much in the same way that a stick would by hitting it. In a sense, re-recorded the snare drum for them. Not many bands get the chance to go back and revisit their music and like tweak anything they wanted to change on a mix. So to get the chance to remix it again, make it sound even better, like, of course, that's great. My overall thoughts on the record are, um, it's a very energetic record. You know, we finally had gotten to that point where the band finally sounded how I thought the band was supposed to sound from the beginning. It's always really, really rewarding uh, to be the guy that kind of, you know, comes in at the 11th hour and, you know, fixes the thing that they think is all broken. It wasn't broken, it just needed a little extra attention, but it turned out great. And I'm glad they like it. I'm glad that people are still responding to the record. And Vinny was totally down to team up with Bill and really give The Chronicle its proper release. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of the album, and after getting to know Peter and the rest of the guys and protagonists, it just made sense. This is, you know, one of the best modern-day punk albums. People need to hear it, and, you know, the best way to put it out there is on vinyl, so that's what we're going to do. To have our own music on that format is always something really special. The way that it came together, the people that played on it, and the people right now that are playing the songs. And in the end, that record illustrates the kind of music and the kind of band that I wanted to play in. And I hope that some people get the same thing out of it that we all put into it. I just hope the honesty of it really comes through, and I hope people just remember that. It reminds me of driving home after school with the windows down, just blasting punk music all the way home. And it just takes me back to that place, and who doesn't want to go there? Just the perfect soundtrack, dude. Life might suck right now, but it's gonna get better. There was always that bit of hope in it. I'm really happy that people are just still discovering the record, and that it's becoming an important album to them as it is to the band and to myself. It's good when, you, when you're friends with a band and they're from your hometown and they put out music that doesn't suck. I mean, that's always a positive thing. The story of the Chronicle is really the band's second shot. It's our second chance. We tried to do something that actually mattered to us, and if it mattered to anybody else, then that's even better, you know? But we really cared about it a lot, and uh, I would just want them to remember us as a band that really, you know, gave a shit about what we did. Sounds awesome. The songs are fun. You want to pull your face off when you're listening to it. It's got all the redeeming qualities that I look for in an album. The Chronicle has that same feeling. It's just classic punk rock the way it's supposed to be made. Still gives me chills to listen to. It's, it's, it's incredible. To this day, whenever I put it on, uh, it brings me back to that time frame, which was such a good time in my life. They've been a band like over 10 years, man, and they're still like fucking doing it and kicking ass. To be able to still be friends 15 years after we meet each other, that's, a, that's just awesome to know that you have that kind of relationship with somebody. So, and that's, the music, music did that for us, you know? I think in a lot of ways, the Chronicle is the illustration or the personification of the band protagonist. You know, the songs contained on the Chronicle are about loss, struggle, hope, 
and everything in between, all at the same time having an eye firmly focused on the future. And I think that's illustrated in the song Stargazers and the song Charge, which ends the record, which you know, which the two songs share the same lyric, which is only when everything is lost is when you can truly begin. What those words really speak to is that when it comes to your life, you're the principal character in making it the greatest life possible. And when I think of protagonists and my involvement in it and my involvement in the record and who I've gotten to do this with and the people that I've gotten to meet, you know, I feel extremely lucky, grateful, and I take none of it for granted.